Oh, hi. We're uh, getting rid of a $10,000 3D printer to replace it with a $500 3D printer. Not because the $500 3D printer does anything better per se, but because the world of 3D printing has sort of moved past the $10,000 3D printer, that printer's pretty old now, and the technology built into our little bamboo printer is actually pretty similar. And uh, we're gonna get ready to set up our brand new Cobra Max 2, and uh, is able to print like giant, giant things. And the reason that I wanted the Cobra Max is because it can print giant uh, Gridfinity plates for the insides of my drawers because now all I do here is organize things. I don't work on Land Rovers, I don't make projects, I just organize my drawers. Chris and I are gonna get this disassembled and then we're gonna try to put the Cobra 2 together. The Cobra 2 is kind of like a build at home, like kind of a rector set kind of printer. It's a little different than like the highly polished Apple store looking sort of Ultimaker. So yeah, we'll see, we'll see how it goes, but here we go. Lots of time lapse for this, so enjoy that. Wow, there you go. We actually got that thing, got that thing down. Well, we, I, when I say we, I mean Chris did it. I didn't, I didn't do anything. Chris, Chris is incredibly strong. Okay, here it is. The Anycubic Cobra next to you. I think every time I say the word Cobra, I'm gonna get Cobra, a Cobra Commander cartoon and I'm gonna go, Cobra! Ah, everyone is against me! Okay, I'm gonna get the official underpowered hour box opening knife. All right, so uh, this is an incredibly dull knife. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ, it's so dull. Oh yeah, there you go. This is really graceful. Okay, here we go. We got the, oh geez, this, even the box is max. Everything about this is max. <sighs> like max headroom. Okay, here it comes. Let's see if it finds me. Okay, here we go. Okay, here's the user manual. Who needs that? Feet of strength, this whole thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Here, one hand on this, and then I'll pull this out. Here we go. Oh, God. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. Okay. Okay, we got this. Now I guess we start taking these, like, foam out very carefully. Remove all accessories from the foam. Give it a bag of stuff. Everything is in Chinese, by the way. There's no English. That's fine, that's gonna be fine. What is this, this is just a, okay, that's a thing. Ooh, looks like a print head. Ooh, that's a hot end, yeah. That is a hot end right there. Wow, this really is a giant printer. <laughs> the size of this thing. Um, okay, now do we just feed of strength this thing out of here again? Into the foam? I think it's just zip tied to itself. Oh, maybe not. No, 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 it's okay. Yeet! All right, well, Chris and I got to putting together the Cobra 2 Max. It's basically made out of 2020 aluminum extrusion. And you basically bolt the whole thing together with a bunch of little Allen screws, much like a Tinker Toy set from your youth if you grew up in the 1980s and 90s. If you didn't grow up in the 1980s and 90s, you have no idea what I'm talking about. There's some upright pieces you have to put on and then you have to attach the extruder itself and tighten all the belts and attach all the cables, plugging in all the little pieces into the motors and things. And it actually only took us probably about half an hour, maybe 45 minutes to get the entire thing put together and ready to start doing our first prints, fresh prints if you will. And like, where is this little, oh, here it is, okay. Yeah, this is, this is incredibly homemade compared to like, every, you know, every other printer, every but, other printer yeah, but of, of course it is. Okay. All right, should we get out of here? I think we should, because I think the next thing is to power it up. So we have this printer now set up, so now I'm gonna go through the sort of, I'm sure what will be simply, simply riveting setup procedure. We have to home all of the different uh, axes, if you will, of the printer. We've got to level the bed off. I'm actually printing with the other printer an extended uh, arm to hold the bigger spool of filament. 
which is why you hear all the printers going in the background. The plan is to actually hold a three kilogram spool, which is like a big boy, a big fatty, off the side of this particular printer. That will let us uh, run this printer for a lot longer. It's a, it's a really, really big bed, so it can print really, really big things. And uh, because of that, it runs out of filament a lot quicker. And so we wanna be able to run the big, big barrel sized filament on this guy. So that's what we're doing. We're, we're setting it up to do that. So I'm gonna go through all that today and uh, it's gonna be, I guess it's gonna be really exciting. This is gonna end up being, I have a feeling a pretty quick montage for all you at home. So enjoy that, I'm sure. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, you know, we'll just go through it, see how it goes. I don't know what we're gonna print. Maybe a, maybe a tiny boat, the little Benji. All right, here we go. Oh, hey, look, we got a boat. Actually, this is a really nice boat. So this is a model called a Benchy, and basically it's got all kinds of little detail and overhang and little shapes and stuff that makes it a really good thing to test out your printer. And this is a really nice one. It's super smooth and it's got all of its little overhangs and all the little parts that you would want to come out properly came out exactly as wanted, so it's good. I mean, it's pretty funny to print something this small on a printer that's like the size of a large pizza, but essentially that's what we did. So. Uh, Good for us. Now, I'm printing a little test sample from my own you know, model now, actually one of the pieces that makes the racks that fit inside of the drawers, to see if sending something from the computer with my own slicer settings, which is the software that makes these things go, to see if that will actually work. Because it's one thing printing the model that came built into the printer, it's quite another thing sending your own things. So, we're gonna print that now and see how it works, but we know we can print tiny boats, so it's not a total loss. All right, well, the first part that's actually our own part has actually printed, and uh, you know what? It's actually really good. It, uh, it printed out about as fast as it would have printed on the bamboo. There's some, there's some considerations there. The bamboo does a lot of, you know, dealing with loading its own material and all that sort of stuff, which you have to do manually on this one. Um, and the bamboo does that automatically and it can do it remotely and all that sort of stuff. This is like a homemade kit, so it, it doesn't do any of that. You load it and unload it and you tell it what temperatures to be at and all that sort of stuff. But it did print the part and uh, it looks good. Now I'm, I'm printing the same part over on the bamboo. Um, the thing is I have different nozzles loaded. So this is a 0.4 nozzle and this is a 0.6 nozzle in the bamboo. And that's not really apples to apples. I could put the 0.4 back in the bamboo, but this is just for testing purposes. I'm, I'm needing to print this little part many times, this little corner block that I'm printing. So might as well anyways. And I just wanna compare the two. I wanna see what the holes look like between them. I wanna see how, you know, basically how the parts compare to each other. Uh, this is pointed, this is all printed at a 0.2 layer height. The bamboo with a 0.6 nozzle in it will only point at a 0.24 layer height. So not exactly apples to apples, but very, very close. Well, now we're actually printing some of the, some of the big prints. We feel confident enough. This is a two and a half hour long print. It's printing uh, again, some drawer inserts for the uh, Gridfinity system. Had to make a slight modification to the reel here because uh, it was actually starting to bend right off the machine. <laughs> this is a very, very heavy reel. So it just made a slight bend in this uh, part here so that now it's, it's cantilevered back ever so slightly. And that way it will relieve some of the stress off of that arm. And that just pulls the filament in right there. That's a little sensor that tells it when it's out of filament. If it were to run out, that's gonna take it a minute probably. Well, now we've kicked into high gear as the uh, base layer is done and she's uh, she's gone into rocket mode here and she starts to draw the walls uh, for what will eventually be uh, filled in now it's going real fast so and now you'll see as it draws the infill it kind of like vibrates almost it's like a like a cold chihuahua it's kind of vibrating away there it's kind of fun giving uh, 3d printer commentary you know like the the L. Michaels of, of printers. So many bins. It's a galaxy of bins. So we've got our giant, giant Cobra 2 Max setup. No, no, no! 
and it lets us do an entire, I think this is like 20 some odd acro mills bins all at once. Now it took about 12 hours, but if we were doing this on one printer, it would have taken forever. So pretty cool. We're pretty happy with it. Tiny bins, so many tiny bins for tiny things. This is where the little bits go. This is a three kilogram spool of gray PLA. That's what we print all of our little bins and inserts with. It was full on Tuesday. We've been printing a lot of bins. <laughs>